I'm Casey Cowdery, and I'm a fiber artist. Textiles and paper are considered to be fiber in the fiber art world. That's just a little bit of information for you to understand what I'm going to show you. We are making our own chess set and it will be a fiber art project. It could be paper or it could be fabric, but we're going to start with paper. You make your own templates from cardstock. So it's heavyweight paper that still can be cut with scissors. My sizes are based on the assumption that the sections of the board will be two inches by two inches. This is a little baby carpenter square. Isn't it darling? I love it. Anyway, these little markings on here are quarter inch. So eight quarters is two inches. So from eight to the edge here is two inches. So I am going to line it up at the top. Okay, there we go. There's another eight quarters, puts me at 16 over there. And then another eight quarters puts me there. And let's see if I can get to, no, it's shy. Okay, so we're gonna go to this upper corner here and start again. So we have eight quarters here and 16 quarters, where's 16, there's 16 there. And that's, that should be enough. All right, now this is where the square comes into play. So I'm going to line up my square at the top and come down here. And same thing here, line up my square at the top and come down here. These don't have to be perfect, but close is a good idea. And we're going to do it again. And, whoops. And then we'll come down here. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing for the other side, for the bottom side of our squares. So there, and there should be about square, not perfect, but okay. And same thing down here. Oops. Okay, one more. Here we go. All right, so that will give me uh, four sections that are roughly two inch by two inch, but I must have done something wrong because they're not perfect, but close enough. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to make uh, templates uh, for our pieces. So we have 16 pieces on each side. We have eight in the home rank, that's the back row, king, queen, so forth. And then we have eight pawns. So we need two templates for each piece. And then if you think about the opposite side, it's a total of 32 pieces, but you got that figured out. All right, so I am going to assume that my pieces are faces, and maybe they have a kind of a bump at the top for a hat or a crown or something. So there's one. And then this is from my back row, and here is something a little bit bigger, and I'll explain why we need two for each piece. That's for our home rank, our back row. And then this is for our pawns, and so we want these to be a little smaller. And then these will be, i make this one a little bit bigger. Not a lot bigger, but a little bit bigger. And now you cut them out. I cut out my templates and I've been kind of rethinking a little bit. This is my biggest piece, just as I cut it out of the template. And this one was the next largest one and it was a little too big, so I trimmed it. You can see my trimmings over here. 
and I've decided that I'm going to use this face piece that is for the faces of my home rank, the king, queen, and so forth, and as the base for the pawns, and then I have another piece that's going to be the face for the pawns, and I think maybe it's going to be more like that, and I had to trim that a little bit too. So this is just plain old copy paper, and I'm not going to use that one, so I'll put it over there, and I'm going to start drawing around my templates. Pretty straightforward, under the copy paper. So here is one for the home rank base and one more for the home rank base. And I made a little bloop there. You can carefully fix that or you can have it be shaped a little differently. It doesn't matter. And here's a face for my home rank. And a second face for my home rank. And then I'm going to use, shuffling this around, huh? Um, this is a base for my pawn row and another base for my pawns and two faces for my pawns. Now once you get these all of these made, don't cut them out yet and because we're going to draw on them and possibly color them. And then here is one more, and I'll just continue doing this off camera. We're done with our templates for now, so we'll just put those aside. Don't throw them away, you might need them, who knows. <laughs> uh, our next step is to draw our faces. And you can see that I put a B on all of these pieces for base. So we don't want to draw a face on the bases, we want to draw a face on the faces. Uh, use a pencil, uh, and because you can erase it, and use a non-smudging eraser. This, this is important because you don't want to have to start over because you've got a big dark streak going through there. Playing cards might be a good model, so you could use those. And let's get started. So here is a kind of a masculine face. These cards look like pretty much the same face. It's just that uh, uh, the, the males have, have face, facial hair. So anyway, uh, let's start with the king. And um, we know that he's going to have a face more or less like this and a pair of eyes and I'm just going to do a simple nose and a mouth not anything gorgeous and let's give him a beard I think I want this kind of a beard and we'll do that this is just our preliminary drawing so we don't want to get too uh, thick with pencil drawings and we'll give him a mustache too, I think. And then he's gonna have a crown. And then our uh, queen will uh, have a little more feminine face. So we'll draw her face like so. And eyes. And a simple nose and pretty lips and no facial hair and maybe we'll just give her a little indication of a, a high collar we want her to be pretty uh, modest here and then we want to do some pawn faces so let's go down here to the bottom of the page and this is where you might want to have some fun 
So maybe you want to have sort of a squiggly thing for their hats, you know, kind of like a jester maybe. And here's her face, eyes, nose, mouth, maybe a great big grin. And maybe here's another one. And his face, eyes, nose, his nose, and mouth. This is maybe not a very happy pawn, or maybe he just doesn't know, so we'll do that. And he's going to have, or she, why couldn't it be a girl pawn? And so there we go. Then our next step is to color our pieces. Use whatever you have around the house uh, to color your, your faces. Uh, these are really inexpensive fine tip markers that came from the office supply store. They're really nice and they're really inexpensive. They do come in a limited range of colors though. Uh, this one came from an art supply store, also very nice. A little more expensive, not terrible. Uh, but there's all kinds of markers in all kinds of different uh, thicknesses and in lots and lots of different colors. So you might want to take a look at that. And these are kind of medium. And this one is gold. The cap indicates the color. And you can see that uh, this here, I'll show you. It's a medium tip. I can show you the fine tip too. You can see that's very fine. And I just had one of these. It's kind of showed up somewhere. I don't know where it came from. You know how it is. But it's a great color. It's called a jelly roll. And those gel markers are really pretty nice to use. And then crayons and colored pencils. Um, use whatever crayons or colored pencils you have. Or if you're going to buy colored pencils, be sure you get ones that have um, a high pigment content. They're, they just work a whole lot um, nicer. And I think that's um, a good way to go. So we're going to start coloring. And uh, this, is, this is all individual. You just do whatever you want to do. I think I'm going to start with my, my markers to get my um, images started. So here's my king. And I'm just going to use my drawing as a beginning point. And I'm going to think I'm going to make their faces just a little bit bigger than I did initially. And this is navy blue, so it's kind of weird for the color of his beard. I think he's going to have a little bit of a curly beard. There's that. And there's his beard. And then here's his mustache. And here's those eyes. Give him just a bit of a brow. Maybe he's a little worried. We'll let him be a little worried. OK, there's that. And our, our lovely queen. So we'll get started with her. And she is going to do that. And she's going to have no hair at all because in times past, if you showed your hair, oh my gosh, that was risque. But here is a little high top. And eyebrows. She's not worried. She's got the king to do that for her. Give her a little bit of eyelashes. And there's her other eye. More eyelashes. And that nose. A couple of dots there. And her lips. And down to our pawns. Let's draw those just a little bit bigger too. And we'll go get that fuzzy hair or fuzzy hat, whatever it is. And his, his or her face. And, and that great big grin. And we can erase the pencil marks. Uh, when we get done and when the ink dries. And this one has lots of curly hair. Maybe we will make this one a girl. And eyes. 
eyes, nose, and this is the one that's not sure what's going on, and contour the face. And so that'll get us started. I'm just going to do a couple of the uh, home rank and a couple of the pawns to get you started. And I think what I'm going to do is to use colored pencils to jazz it up. And my color will indicate the which side of the board it is. So let's assume that um, we're going to use a maroon color and an orange because we can differentiate those two colors nicely. And we're going to make our queen, and you can go outside the lines because you're going to cut this out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, maybe you want to do a little bit of shading on one side and a little bit of color. And doesn't she look nice? Now this one, I got a little bit of too much pencil line on our king, so we'll erase that before we put the colored pencil on because that would get smudgy with any eraser. And we'll use our um, maroon color. And we'll do a little shading on the side there too. Just, just dab. And I think I want to, uh, where's my, there it is, I want to kind of differentiate this beard a little bit more, kind of go up onto his chin and maybe he'll have curly at the chin. And he's got a handlebar mustache. And A little, just a little more shading and more color in the whole thing. So we've got a purple side and an orange side. So those ought to be easy to tell apart. And maybe I want to uh, make the crown a little darker just to give it some character. And We'll just color in part of his face, and I think I'm going to use my lonely little red one, red marking pen, to give them red lips. Why not? And we're looking pretty good here. Just a little more color. And where's my orange one? Here we go. And we'll do the same thing to her crown, just make it a little bit more intensely colored. And uh, maybe a little, little extra color down here at her neck. And then down to our pawns, we've got them um, with too much pencil mark too, so we'll get rid of that. And they still are going to go on each side, so we're going to make an orange side, an orange pawn. This is our girl pawn. And maybe she'll have orange cheeks. And maybe a little over here. And then our... didn't quite get all the pencil marks out, so we'll do that again. And we have our maroon side. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of shading on this side over here. And there we are. Oh, yeah, I'm going to leave that open. All right. That's the beginning of our color. We have our uh, play pieces, our uh, home rank pieces cut out now, and I decided to uh, try something here. I wanted to use these black beads uh, for one side and these white beads for the other. 
The problem with the white beads, though, is that they just don't show up. But I thought the um, orange embroidery floss would make them show up enough, but they're still pretty uh, subtle, and I think we want more uh, differentiation. What I wanted to talk to you about um, embroidery floss. Embroidery floss is a really old product, and it typically comes in six ply. And if I can get these apart here to show you, there are six smaller threads that are twisted together to make one larger thread. And they can be separated and you can use any number of the, the plies, any number of the small threads. And some people do very fine work with just one ply, so that can be used. But six ply is not going to go through these small beads that I have now. So what I have here is two ply. When I thread the needle and uh, double it over at this end, I have a total actually of four ply. And when I would have thread the needle with the six ply, it doubled over, that'd be 12 ply. So that gets pretty darn thick. And so I will show you how to make what some people call a quilter's knot. Quilters tell me they just call it a knot. So you put your end of your thread on your forefinger and put your needle over the, that tail end, that's called a tail, twist, and because this is only two ply, I'm going to twist twice. I don't want a big fat knot, but I do want um, a knot that I can uh, end up holding on to. I'll show you what that's all about. And then you just pull it down to the end of the thread. And there you are. And we're going to leave this tail on here for now, and I'll show you why. We're going to sew the beads on by coming up from the underside of our paper. So you can see that here. And right through one of our dots and pull up the thread. And I'm not going to pull the knot up snug to the uh, hole. I'm going to use that knot to hold on to. Now I'm going to get one of these beads onto my needle and I'm going to make a different hole in the paper because if you try to use the same hole, paper is not very strong and it could tear through pretty easily. So we're going to pull that through. There's one bead. Then we're going to come up through the back again onto the second dot. And put another bead on the needle. I don't have to hold on to the knot anymore, but I'm going to hold it out of the way. Uh, this, the um, thread is now secure. Go back through in a slightly separated part of the paper and pull it through. And I'm just going to keep going with this until I have all five beads sewn onto this one. I wanted to mention that I really like this color of beads for my orange side and it's dark enough that I think it'll show up but these beads are even smaller than the black beads that I have so I'm going to have to come up with another needle that will go through these beads. That is possible. There are beading needles available. I've sewn on all five beads now so our king is differentiated with some beads. It's decorated and um, what I'm going to do now with this thread is I'm going to secure it on the back with a few stitches under those loops that are left on the back when I traveled from one bead to the next bead. Don't have to do much of this. And I'll cut it off pretty short because I don't want it to stick out on me, stick out beyond the uh, edge, and then I'm going to cut off this tail on this um, on, uh, with our knot on it also. I went ahead and put some color on one of our bases and cut it out, and I decided I was going to highlight around the edge, and maybe I'm going to highlight a little more right here, 
and I'm going to use my glue stick and I'm going to glue all the way to the edges. You want to get all the way to the edge because you want your edges to be stuck down and this will keep the um, threads from coming loose also. And then I am going to press this in place and that seems to work pretty well. I am happy with that. But I think I'm going to put just a little more color on the edge of this right here. The uh, back, the backing, the base will help it to slide more easily on the board and it'll keep the threads from being snagged on anything. So there we are. Now you can use any uh, board that you might have. You can just go ahead and use an existing board or you can make your own paper fiber art board also. When I've completed my fiber art project, all the play pieces and the board, chess anyone? Goodbye for now.